Okay, so I've had a few people send me questions about doing a calculation for a stand pipe, and I figured it just might be easier to show you in a video rather than having to type out a bunch of text and explain everything each time. Now, the one thing I don't want anyone to get misled here, this is not going to be an auto calc video. This is strictly a hydrocalc video, but I'm using... Uh, I'm using an AutoCAD drawing to make it easier easier to explain uh, what we're doing here. So as you can see here, we have a city supply. This is my node up here, city supply, and it's 85 static, 65 residual with uh, 1150 flow. It's going to flow over to here. We're going to have a reference point at this elbow at the bottom, UG1. It's going to hit the floor, the flange at the floor. So that's this reference point. And I've thrown in a few extra reference points here. Here's my pump inlet, pump outlet, and bottom of riser reference points. This is my pump info over here. It's going to go to the top of the riser. It's going to cut across and we're going to have this bulk run to go feed two standpipes. We have, and now I'm going to call the closer standpipe standpipe two, and we're going to have, uh, we're going to make sure that we're flowing some water from that standpipe. And then I'm going to go over to standpipe one and I'm going to put a node at each floor. So floor two has a node, floor three, floor, floor, floor four, and floor five have nodes here. And these are the two that will be flowing water. So I'm just going to use this as a guide when we enter, enter our, um, hydraulics. So let me drag this over to the side. And we're going to go enter this into the calculation program to see how this all works. So I'm going to kind of skim through this real fast and uh, we'll get going here. So I'm going to start off by calling this our job. It's going to be um, our standpipe calc. So I'm going to call it standpipe. Oops, let's do uppercase standpipe calculation. Uh, today's date is 6-15-21 and I'll start with company number one, Hydrotech. It's an English or Imperial calculation, and I think we're good to go. So I'll start typing things in. Now, I'm back in the day when I had to enter these calcs by hand, I would always put my nodes and connect the dots and then fill out all the pertinent data afterwards. So I'm going to do the same as I've always done in the past. I'm going to put connect the dots and then we'll go fill out the rest of this. So I'll, I'm just concerned with filling up node one and node two right now. So this is going to connect here. So we're I'm going to do the two outlets first, and then I'll go from floor five all the way down and connect everything from there. So these are my two hoses, and it's going to be HSC1 to FLR5, and then I'm going to do HSC2 to FLR4. And then now this is going to be stand pipe one. And standpipe one is connect connect FLR five to FLR four, FLR three. I'm hitting enter FLR two, and that connects to STP one. Standpipe one then connects to standpipe two, and then it connects to these. So standpipe. So this is going to be uh, my bulk run. STP1 connects to STP2, enter, TOR, BOR, to PO, PO stops, PI, connects to base, base to UG1, UG1 to city, I believe I called it. Let's confirm that. Yeah, to city. So that connects to city. And actually, I can say uh, this is my... I'll insert a row here. This is my riser and this is my underground. Oh, actually, wait, I think I missed a point here. Base to flange, flange to floor. So base to FLG, FLG to UG1, UG1 to city and city. All right, there we go. So I've connected all the dots and I've used these nice handy notes to to split up the calculation. Next, I'm going to start doing my diameters. Now, I think I, we can try an two and a half inch, uh, sorry, a uh, four inch riser. So I'm going to use a four inch riser in this case. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to do their two and a half inch diameter um, 
for the hoses. So two and a half inch schedule 10, I'll click okay. Actually, I think those are schedule 40, right? So let's go schedule 40. And uh, this is gonna be a dry system. So I'll end up fixing all of these C factors that, after the fact. So don't worry about these being 120 right now. Uh, my standpipe one is gonna be four inch diameter. So I'll go for highlight all those and schedule 10 and I'll click okay. My bulk run is going to be, let's try four inch as well. Actually, we'll do the rest of this is four inch. So I'm going to go four inch, schedule 10, four inch, actually do here, four inch, schedule 10, and four inch, schedule 10. And then this is going to be four inch, base to flange. And this is going to be I'll control C, control V, and then these ones will be blue brute. So I'll go four inch blue brute. And there we go. Okay, so now we've taken care of all of our pipe types. Uh, just because I'm going to do a save as real quick. So I'm going to call this my standpipe calculation video. And now I'll do our links. So these are going to be these are for the um hoses so let's zoom in re real tight here so hose one to floor five and hose two to floor four so i'm going to tell it that this is going to be i don't know like a foot and we're going to have a t and then we're going to count 35 feet so t 35s you don't want to do 35 t because if you do that then that counts 35 t's if you do t 35 you're going to tell it that you have um one T and 35 feet worth of equivalent length of pipe. So that's why we're doing it T35, not 35 T. From here, I'm going to tell it, give it my lengths. So from floor four to floor five, these are like all 10 feet between lengths. So if I do W, if I go back to CAD and I do WL for what length, I pick a pipe and that's 10 feet, 10 feet, 10 feet. And then I think this is three feet three feet yeah so floor two to standpipe one is three feet so this is going to be 10 10 10 and floor two to standpipe one is three and we don't have any fittings until we get to this point here so we're going to throw in a t at that point right there standpipe one to standpipe two w l and that's 50 feet so let's type in 50 feet and standpipe two to top riser, WL here, 25 plus five, so 30 feet. So, or I can type it in 25 plus five, and that comes up back as 30 feet. Tour to bore is, I think, seven feet, WL, seven. And bore to PO, I think, is three feet, WL. Kind of oh, four feet, so let's go four. PI to base is going to be six feet, and base to flange, base to flange. This is uh three feet in the air, so it's that flange is at zero, so this is at three. Our underground is also three feet underground, so that's three. And then underground to city is going to be this run of pipe plus this here. So let's do a WL 50 plus 5. So 50 plus 5. So 55. All right. So there, our lengths are all taken care of. I'm going to hit save again. Next, our fittings. So I think I got all the way up to this T over here. And from stamp pipe two to top riser is one elbow. So let's do an elbow here. Nope, that's not the right one from to here. Elbow. Toward a bore is, uh, let's count um, an alarm valve, a butterfly, an elbow, and a dry pipe valve. So if you like community, we got one avid there. All right, so we got our, we have that. Then we're gonna go to our pump. And bore to PO, I think we also need to include a backflow preventer in here too. So let's just kind of, I know I'm kind of throwing a bunch of things in. So let's go with a backflow. So I'm going to right click curves and let's go with the Ames 3000 SS. 
and then it goes pump outlet to pump inlet so we don't have this is a blank row we're only doing this so that we can establish an elevation so we'll cover that in a little bit and then finally pi to base is an elbow base to flange is another is nothing and then flange to elbows uh, flange to underground one is an elbow and then city all the way over to our fire hydrant is going to be um, let's count a couple elbows a whoops e e a gate valve and a t so we have that so now pretty much all this stuff is taken care of now i can type in my input types this is more you know optional if you want i can call it underground and i can call this all of my riser piping so this is helpful it isn't mandatory but um if you want you can you can uh fill it out if you need to so i'm already halfway down so let's figure out something here for that i'm going to call it arm overs for those hoses this is our main mns oops mns Yes, and this is going to be our main. Actually, I want to call this. Yeah, that's fine. Damn it, that's fine. All right, good. K factors, and actually, you'll notice that um, the I couldn't get the hot rows that are highlighting to kind of refresh themselves. So if it's bothering you enough, just arrow through these, and it'll clear the highlighted rows if if it bothers you like it does for me. As for our K factors or hose flows, we need to count 250 gallons per minute here and here. So I'm going to count these as now, if you right click, you'll notice you have an H250. This is more meant for outside hose at the city supplier at the fire at the fire hydrant. We're going to count these as plus 250. Okay. So that's a plus 250 there. The floor below it is also going to be a plus 250. And then we need to count because we have a second standpipe. So we have our 500 GPM on the first standpipe. We need to count 250 at this standpipe, but we only need to count that 250 where it is being fed to. So basically at this intersection here. So at STP2, standpipe 2, we're going to count 250 GPM. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to make sure that STP2 is in the node 1 column. And I'm going to put 250 there. Okay. And it's a standpipe calc, so we're not going to count outside hose. Next, we're going to do our pressure. So I'm going to count 65 PSI at here. And since we have 65 PSI here, we know for sure we'll have more than 65 PSI here. And we'll know for sure we have more than 65 PSI there. So I don't have to do anything else. So that's it. So for flowing hose, 250 GPM, density is blank, area is blank, and then we put our pressure in. As for elevations, the only places where elevations really matter is if you have water flowing out of that point. So let's go figure out what our elevation is at this point. I'm going to do a WL or WI, sorry, WI for what is it to find out the elevation of this. Um, and it's at 516 inches. So let's go to the calculator and 516. 16 divided by 12 is 43 feet so 43 feet is there so we have this at 43 and i know that it's th uh, 10 feet between floors so 33 and this is also hose one and floor five are at the same elevation so that's 43 33 23 and uh 13 i guess as uh floor two floor two WI and that's 156 so I'll trust it 1 divided by 13 12 13 feet yep 13 and this is going to be at 10 feet here so this is at 10 and STP2 is also at 10 TOR is at 10 bore is at 3 feet PO is at three feet and PI is at three feet. Base is at three feet. Let's confirm that. Flange is at zero feet and UG1 is at negative three feet. And city is at, uh, I counted, how many feet did I count? 
24. So it's at two feet in the air. So two feet. All right. So we have our, all of our elevations in. I'm going to hit save. And again, like I said, this drawing was just more for guidance. Um, I did use, I did go to an isometric view and I just kind of sketch it out real quick. A lot of times it just may be easier to do this than to try to run the auto calc process. This is just my opinion. So if you have a simple standpipe calc that you want to run and you have a drawing, it just might be easier to just sketch it out real quick in an isometric view. You can see I'm in my, you know, I, that's my top view. But if I go to ISO, I was able to draw all this stuff in isometric view and it just makes sometimes it's a little bit easier to follow along too. So that's just my opinion about uh, of it. Now that we're done with this, um, oh, we're, we aren't done. We have to go put our water supplies in. I'm going to save this. I'll go to my water supplies. I will tell it I have a city. Static is 85. Tab 65. Tab 1150. Tab, 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 tab. And spacebar or click OK. Connection point is called city. And the elevation is at 2 feet. And I will tell it now I have supply number 2. Let's go take a look at that. So supply two is, I'll edit my pump. And this is 75, tab 750 at 120. So I'm tabbing all the way across here. You'll notice these values are all zeros. So I have to populate this box by hitting at make NFPA curve. So now it's now filled out these boxes here. I can click OK. And now my connection point is still city. My inlet is PI and my outlet is PO. And my elevation was at three feet. And I'll click OK. And there we go. We have our calculation done. We don't need the drawing anymore. So let's just pull that out here. And I'm going to save it. And I'll run my calculation. I'm missing C fact. Ah. You said you were going to take care of it. And you didn't. So I forgot all my C. Or I'm, I guess I'm missing some C factors. So let's take care of those real quick. I'm going to. First off, it was going to be a dry system. So let's change these 120s to 100s. So I'm going to hit find and 120 will be replaced with 100. And I'm going to change it all the way over to my um, my top riser, I guess, up to about here. So I'll, I can hit replace and replace, replace, replace. So I can cl keep clicking until I get to where I need it to go. And that's it. So I'll click exit and I will save it again. Now it said I was missing a, a C factor or a K factor. Let's see what's happening. Oh, I know what I did. I forgot to tell it what my source point or my flowing head was. And I forgot to tell it what my connection point was. So I'll go back here. Missing C factor base to flange. Base to flange is missing a C factor. Oh, right here. So let's tell that that's 120. And let's try to run the calculation. There we go. Now I can tell that my remote point is HSC1 and my source point is city. And we're good to go. Click OK. And uh, I think so the system flow demand of 750 exceeds the maximum rated flow of 750 indicated in the loss curve. So what that's telling us is, and this was totally unintended, it's telling us that that 4-inch Ames 3000 SS is not rated to more than 750 GPM. So I'm going to click OK here and either there's a couple different things you can do. If you know what the loss curve is, and I tell this to a lot of people because what's happening is even though we are flowing 750 GPM and even though the backflow is rated for 750 GPM, because of the churn percentage, it's rated to flow more than 750. So the possibility of it flowing 750 is likely. That's why you're getting that warning. So this is what I'll do here. I'm going to go to alter pipe and fittings. Let's go confirm that that backflow is really 750. So I'll scroll down and I'm looking for L, uh, units of English or imperial, imperial units or E. The type is going to be a curve. And I probably could have just dragged the cursor all the way to the bottom like I'll do now. And we'll go find a ZAF. So ZAF right here. Here's my Ames 3000 SS. And we are using a 4-inch. So I'll go over to my 4-inch column right here. 
And yep, that backflow is rated for exactly 750 GPM. But, and even though we're only flowing 750, it should work. But because of the pump's churn percentage, we have to count another 50% more. So that would be like 11, 1150 or something like that, somewhere around there. Here's the way around it. I can look at this chart and see that, okay, well, at 750 GPM, this backflow is, is going to be causing about 10, let's say about 10 PSI friction loss. So I can replace that ZAF with the 10 PSI. So I'm going to cancel this. I'll exit out of this. And instead of using a ZAF here, I can just tell it I'm losing 10 PSI so or 10 pounds. So 10 and hashtag or pound sign. So 10 pounds is an alternative. Now I'll click OK to calculate it. And there we go. It's run the calculation through. It's flowing 750 GPM. We require 68.6 PSI. I have a 7.33 safety margin. So that covers my 5 PSI minimum. And I'm at 9.7 PSI under the uh, percent under the water supply curve. So again, um, hopefully this is enough. If you have issues or you realize you need more as a face, more of a safety margin, you can bump up some of your diameters or whatever you need to, to get it to work. But there we go. That's how you do a standpipe calculation from scratch. I hope this has helped. If you have any other questions, you can get in touch with me. George at hydrocad.com is my email address, and I'll probably throw that up in the link here. Thank you. Hey guys, I just realized I totally forgot to show you something that I meant to show you in the original video. So I'm just going to do this supplemental video after the back to make sure I cover that. When I was setting up these reference points, I included floor three, floor two, and standpipe one in my calculation. And that was not necessarily just to break it up, which obviously helps because it, you know, to be able to see pressures at each broken point is is useful but i could have gone from floor 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 four reference point all the way straight back to this reference point standpipe two which i didn't i threw these extra nodes in here again so that it could break it up here and the reason i did that is because especially recently i've gotten a rash of questions about floor control valves which i'll still point you to the blog to read up on first before you um check in with me but by putting these extra reference points, you're forcing the program to give you a reset or a, the value at that location. For instance, let me run the calculation again. So I'll hit calculate. I'll click OK. Click OK to that. And there was a view button in that previous window. I really discourage you from using it. I prefer to use this method here because it kind of keeps the two. It keeps this WordPad window separate from your calculation window if you click it from the other window it causes it could cause other issues so that's why I avoid doing that uh, one other thing so we're looking at the raw data of the calculation right now one quick thing is if you have word wrap turned on your data may look a little messy like this so if you're getting your text to show up like this where part of row one starts here and then it, it continues down to that next row like that's de technically one row of data there if you turn off your word wrap, it will keep it all clean looking. So just keep that in mind. If your raw data looks um, messed up, just turn off word wrap and it'll show up properly. Now, here's what I want to find out. I need to find out, well, what exactly is my pressure at floor two at this, at this grip right here? What's my, what's my flow and pressure at that point by opening and by first off by adding this hydraulic reference point in my calculation and now if i look at if i view my calculation results i can look at floor two and it'll tell me that my start pressure is 90.158 psi so i can see that at floor two i have 90.1 psi if i go up one level it's down to 85.06 psi if i go up another level where i'm actually flowing it's at 79.96 psi so by putting these extra reference points in your calculation breaking it up you're forcing the program to report back to you what the flows and pressures are at each point and you can even see how much friction loss you're losing between points and other things as well so this um this was the reason why i did that and i hope this helps if you have any other questions obviously let me know and thank you for watching